1997, John Travolta became Nicolas Cage. And Nicolas Cage became a slightly toned down version of Nicolas Cage. That's right. This week, I watched Face Off. Yay. <laughs> Hey. It's not your turn yet. Uh, <laughs> hey, what is up, everybody? It's Jake Baker. Uh, I can't remember how to do the intro because I forgot to do it last time. Welcome to Clear Tinted Classics, the show where I watch movies for the very first time and give my nostalgia-free opinions on them. That's right. And today, you heard them already. I'm joined by two new guests, or maybe not. Who knows what order I'll release these fucking episodes in. Uh, today, I have Neil Lewis on the show. Hey, everybody. And I also have Joe Wood, or as he likes to go by, Joe Woody. Hi, I'm here too. <laughs> I yeah. don't know. I never know how to do that anymore. Professionally, either, it's Joe Woody. Either way, either way. Okay, that's right. So we're here at Neil's house. Three people gathered around my one sad microphone. <laughs> well, seven other microphones sit in the room <laughs> uh, next to us that are going unused. Yes. Neither here nor there. That's how we roll. All right. So yeah, we just watched Face Off, and uh, it was interesting. Um, but first off, I want to let my guests talk a little bit about themselves. So Neil, tell us about your history with movies in general, and if you your history with Face Off, your history with John Travolta and Nicolas Cage, maybe even your history with John Woo. <laughs> um, so my history of John Woo is this movie. <laughs> um, I've actually never seen any other John Mi Woo two? movie. Mission Impossible 2? Okay, yes. Yeah, you're right. I guess I've seen that. That also had doves in it. Um, <laughs> I mean, that's what I know about John Woo. He has doves and a lot of jumping gun scenes. I'm aware of his movies, but I haven't seen them. Uh, as far as my movie history goes, uh, Joe and I did a podcast for like three or four years called Oops All Movies. Uh, ended a couple years ago. So we watched a ton of movies. I, we probably watched in that three-year span probably... 200 movies or so to 250 movies so a lot of movies a lot of movies every week yep <laughs> watch a lot of movies we watched six harry potter movies in the span of a day and that was for the podcast that's for the podcast oh. yeah so we were up to like well speaking honestly speaking of movies that like we hadn't seen the new harry potter was coming out and we we're going to review it on the show so we like went back and, and watched all neither of us had seen all the harry potter movies really because i uh I've only seen up to four, because four was where I tapped out, because I was a... Because it's bad. Well, I was a little baby boy who... uh, (laughs) It wasn't like the books? Yeah, that was what it was. Oh, no. The the fourth book was my favorite book, and the fourth movie was so insanely different than the the book. I was like, I can't watch this shit anymore. And it's ridiculous, because now that I know more about movie making, I can't make a fucking thousand-page book into a (laughs) two-hour movie. You just can't. Right. Uh, yeah, but I've just never gone back and watched any of them. I've read all the yeah. books. I kind of completed. The, I kind of outgrew the book series, but just completed it. Just be, like it was like, well, I've come this far. Right, um, right, right. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut Neil off, but that's what. So yeah, we did six of those movies that everyone had seen that we hadn't seen. What'd you think of them? I'm curious. I, I, I don't even know how the. F- I really dig those movies. I mean, yeah. I I think it's a really good series. I mean, we did a lot of movies that we hadn't seen before. Uh, the one that stands out at the top of my head is we, uh, at one time, had did some fundraising and took donations to watch movies that people requested. Oh yeah, um, I forgot about uh, that. We we watched uh, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Um, That's that one was, that I need to do for the show. Okay, we so, did that. Even though we directly do a rip off of it in the movie that we made, I have never watched it. <laughs> well, we—I mean, the movie's so well known, but it, it's before our time. So, like, yeah. we would always get shit from people. Like, I understand that we're doing a podcast about movies, but it would the, the running thing well, would be right. like, "Oh, you haven't seen that? yeah," you haven't seen, and that's like the whole How premise you of your a, yeah, yeah, a film yeah. critic. If and you that's like seen, that's like the whole premise of your show. Exactly. We, like, I, we we would get that like. All the time, and right. it's like, well, I don't know. I've watched two hundred movies, but I haven't seen that one that you like. Sometimes liked. it'd be like things that that were pretty obscure to begin with, and it'd be like, well, yeah, okay, I, I don't I'm, know what to tell you. To be fair to some people, yeah, there were there are a ton of big movies that I haven't seen, but like some of them were obscure or like older. You know, yeah. like I understand they're a classic, but 
before I was like super into movies, I didn't really care to go back and like watch yeah, classics. I, I found though that the ones that people really hold on to super hard, especially the ones that are old, there's a reason they survived. You know, like I, I don't yeah. know if I've talked about it very much on this show, but uh, Casablanca is like one of my favorite movies of all time. I've never seen that. It's in, I've never seen it either. It's fucking so. incredible. Hey, there's our second episode, right there, <laughs> Casablanca. Yeah, so Casablanca is a. I'm gonna have to choose. Because I'm gonna I'm gonna subject somebody on this show to that and do like a reverse episode, and I'm not sure who subject them to it. I mean, it's an old movie, but it's well, it's it, amazing. Yeah. Well, I didn't mean that all old movies are bad. No. I'm just saying that's it's what, like that's pretty much what you meant. That's what I meant. Any movie made before the year I was born in 1988 is dog shit, and no one should care about it. But uh, I mean. I just never went back and like you know like watched movies that I have well it's, it's supposed sl- to have seen. Well, it's, it's selective. Like I, you know, obviously, uh, I, I guess for reference, one of my favorite movies is Blade Runner. That's an older movie, as that came out before I was I, born. Yeah, I had never seen that. Well, but like we, when, we did before that for the podcast, I know. But before you showed it to me, like just you know a few yeah. years ago, like I had never seen it. Or like uh, 2001: Space Odyssey. I had never uh, seen that. Doctor Strange Love, nope. yeah. So, Kubrick yeah. movies in general. So, I haven't seen two thousand one. Oh, jeez. I haven't seen Strange Love. You're telling me you do a, a podcast about films and, and you, you haven't, haven't seen, seen those Kubrick films? Movies? Yeah, but that's the hook of my podcast. Oh, <laughs> there you go. You Ours can... had "oops" in the title. Um, yeah, yeah people was... would take it seriously. Yeah. Like we were supposed to. Be these like we did it because there was a cereal called Oops All Berries, <laughs> but it was movies. That was get it. Joke. That was the joke. Yeah, it's not actually a joke. We grew up in the nineties. Oh, me too. Somewhat. Uh, you can get Oops All Berries at your local grocery these days. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we get a cut. We don't. But, <laughs> um, uh, we but, totally derailed Neil's introduction. No, it's fine. This is uh, the format. Basically, <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. Um, Kubrick stuff's on my list. Blade Runner. I don't know what I'm gonna do about Blade Runner because I've, I've watched I've actually, all five, four, five, four cuts four of it. Yeah. <laughs> no. See, the thing is, I've seen most of it once, and it was the version that had voiceover. With the voiceover. And I couldn't finish it. I got so bored, I quit. I was like, I can't fucking watch it, this anymore. So, have you seen the new Blade Runner? It's. I literally have it taped on my DVR, and I'm going to watch it. Okay. Um, I the just, new one? Or yeah, 2049. Okay. Um, I'll, the thing is, like, because I've technically seen a lot of it, I don't... I stretch the rules of this shit. We're, we're doing fucking face-off right now. <laughs> uh, the, the classic, Spoilers. Clear-tinted oh, classics. I know I, I spoiled it at the top of the episode. Um, I stretch the definition of classic all the time because I just... This show's, yeah, but, but this movie is very widely known. That's true. Not It's a blockbuster. It was yeah, like, it, I mean, it was a big action movie in the 90s that a lot of people saw, like... It just because it's not Casablanca doesn't mean that it wasn't. Well, I mean, you like, could say like, like today, the Transformers yeah, movies I are like the biggest thing that there are, but they won't be considered classics. But well, you don't know; they might, <laughs> they might be the future religion a thousand years from now. That's, yeah, that's I mean, well. I mean, there's a movie where Optimus goes and kills God. So <laughs> twice. Well, yeah, that's like his whole mission. I tapped out after two of those. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Although I, I genuinely like the first one. The first Transformers movie is where I uh, came up with the theory that if you just put Anthony Anderson in your movie, it instantly makes it good. He ate the whole damn plate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Those yeah. donuts. Yeah, the whole plate. Uh, and then his character is never referenced again in the whole series. Yeah, yeah that's bullshit. Anthony Anderson is the best. <laughs> <laughs> Face well, off. Well, we were, we were talking about Neil's. So you said Blade Runner is one of your favorites? Uh, bl- yeah, so that's I I like movies that are have like a more psychological angle to them. So like Blade Runner, two thousand one Space Odyssey, like kind of longer movies or more complicated. Silence Sil- of the Lambs. Sil- yeah, uh, Silence of the Lambs. I I enjoy um, movies that have some sort of like message or like political message. Um, I also like so not Face Off. Face Off, no. I mean, what it's, there it's are fine. there I mean, are politics in Face Off. It's about the FBI yeah. and how much they uh, overreach their power. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh. Uh, so no, I, I I enjoy movies. I'm not in it in any professional capacity. Um, Someone say I'm not either. Well, that's <laughs> debatable. I I wouldn't say that about S- you. Some of those being me. <laughs> Mostly me. I say no. I've I've taken. Still photos of a of a real filmmaker doing things. So oh. don't get ahead of yourself, well, Neil. <laughs> that's a nice segue to Joe Wood. Yeah, let's hear about Joe. 
I don't consider myself a filmmaker, but we are making a documentary. So I've been into documentaries lately. I was, I did the Oops All Movies podcast with Neil for a long time. We watched a lot of movies, and like I said... Just like, for reference, Steve Clark was also our third co-host. Just yeah, to, and uh, it just kind of grew old for me, and part of it, honestly, was like the people just saying stuff like, you never seen this? And I'm like, no. I, I like go to the theater and watch the movie that just came out Joe was embarrassed like, for the podcast. Yeah, but, but I don't know. It was fun while I did it. I mean, I like movies. I honestly, like... I don't know that I'd be making a documentary right now if I hadn't done the podcast because I watched so many movies over those years. Like it, it just became such like a part of my life. Like I had always been into movies, but then I, I like started taking them more seriously. But yeah, that's I, I'm not I'm not gonna call myself a filmmaker. Well, Anyways, that's me. Uh, Joe's an interesting guy. <laughs> I've been friends with him for a while. I've been friends with both these guys for a while. Um, me and Neil are, are like over two decades. Yeah, yeah. we we knew each other. Uh, Mutual friend of ours handed us handed me a note asking me to spell spell Adominable so I could get into his and Joe's club and I spelt it wrong but he still let me in anyway. This is so, in elementary school. Yeah, this is elementary school. That was like it was like a note that had a drawing of a Abominable Snowman, <laughs> which it's I'm like, pretty sure comes from the game. What's all like Ski Windows? Free? Yeah, Ski, Ski Free. free. Remember yeah. that game where you got ate by a Yeti at the end? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the most '90s thing ever. Is this off topic? <laughs> I'm not sure. I think I'm actively avoiding getting into face off because I'm not sure what to say about it. But hey, um, <laughs> so this is a guest episode, so I'm not going to bog people down with my preconceived notions because honestly, I don't have any preconceived notions. My my preconceived notion was John Travolta and Nick Cage switch faces, and they do. I I mean, honestly, this movie came out so long ago that I kind of knew the plot. But I had never watched it. Like, right. I never actually watched it. Yeah, I guess we film. should establish that. Joe and I are coming into this uh, face off virgins. And I had, I honestly, it's like one of those, it's for me, I've seen parts of it on like TBS or TNT or cable TV, but never actually watched fully. I think I've seen like the, some of the action set pieces before. Those have no bearing on the plot for the most part. Yeah, so. I, well, like the the language of this film is everywhere in the '90s, like action films, like John it's, John, it's John Woo, Woo, slow motion explosions and everything like that stuff is right. Is what you the think of first when you say angles, yeah. yeah, but like that's when you think of like '90s action films, it's this and like The Rock and Speed and like movies like that. I think. If, Early my anyone. I mean, I mean anybody who watched action movies in the '90s watched this. I think sure, and it's. I mean, I I I love schlocky action movies. I'm a real sucker for them. It's weird lately. I think I just haven't been as much in the mood for them uh, because normally I I just I'm real forgiving of this kind of stuff. And well, there's also like not as many pure schlocky action movies like this. They don't make them anymore, and they don't do practical. Effects like fast, know, the fast, and, well, and that furious <coughs> movies are like really the only things that do practical like chases and stuff. Yeah, well, Michael Bay to a certain extent, although he only does Transformers movies. So, yeah. but but it is different. Like they just didn't have the option of just making everything a CG set piece. So it's like, yeah, we really rammed a boat into another boat and like made it blow up and launch us 50 feet in the air. It's pretty glorious. <laughs> like I say, I say on this podcast all the time that like my favorite era is like 70s movies with a slight follow up of like early 80s. I just love that aesthetic and and back then they they weren't doing any sort of CGI nothing. No. Um, yeah, it's it's interesting too cuz I was I actually bothered to get on get on my phone and do a teensy bit of research. Because uh, I was trying to remember, I was like, "Oh, what John Woo movies have I seen?" Uh, his his director's list isn't quite as extensive as I remember or, well, it being. No, he just I has don't, I don't think the he's... memorable movies that With like a lot of people dance. have seen, and they recognize his style. But yeah, the big one is one that I'm going to do for this podcast eventually. I'm pretty sure I own it on DVD, and that's Hard Boiled. But I haven't seen yeah. Hard Boiled. Although I do love me some Chow Yun Fat. That guy's the best. He was on Dragon Ball Evolution. Oh yeah, is he Master Roshi? Yep, that I yeah. I, I fell asleep. Oh, yeah. I, I, I was trying to think Dragon Ball Evolution. That was the live action one. Yeah, I forgot, I forgot that existed. I, I, I woke I woke up two nights ago and it was on TV and I started oh. watching it and I was like, this movie's like actually not a bad. Oh no. Well, no. Here's the thing. <laughs> the movie's not a bad like if you've ever seen like mystical Chinese action movies, 
that's clearly what it was. It just sure. doesn't give a flying fuck about anything related to Dragon, Dragon Ball. Ball. Sure. It's but just Piccolo's a, in it. James Marsters Piccolo. Yeah. From Buffy Spike. I, I didn't yeah. even realize that was him until I was watching it again. The movie's insanely bad, but like just as a pure because I I woke up and it was Chi Chi was fighting Chi Chi. And I was like, this is actually not that badly shot. And there's like fire in the background, but everyone hates it because it just pissed all over Dragon Ball. And it did. Well, that movie was people in that aren't, hell for like years. And, and people that aren't Dragon Ball fans aren't going to watch it. <laughs> Yeah, it, like that. No one. I mean, unless right. you accidentally stream it, like on <laughs> Netflix, like it just comes up when after you've watched something else. Like that's the only way that anybody right. who's not a Dragon Ball fan would watch it. Yeah, but then it's like a ridiculous premise. Like that movie is probably made purely for the Chinese, or like, well, like, yeah, I'd say the Chinese market is probably possibly. Yeah. It probably did fine. It, it's exactly that flavor of movie. But the thing was, John Wu, his list. It was like hard boiled, and I barely recognized anything else. Like I only know about his Red Cliff movies just because I'm a big Dynasty Warriors fan, and <laughs> I want to watch them someday. But like, it, I don't know. So, do you guys feel like talking about Nick Cage or John Travolta at all before we really get I, into it? I would say this is Nick Cage's second best movie from this year, from 1997. So, oh, um, this year in 1997. And I, yeah, I'm sorry. The year this movie came out uh, because. Face or uh, Con Air also came out this year. Uh, Con so. Air, that's another one. Con Air, everybody, uh, well, and The Rock and Face Off. That's like the John Travolta '90s trifecta. Well, right? Nick Cage. Con Air didn't. Nick, oh yeah, Nick yeah, Cage, Nick Cage, the Nick Cage '90s Tri- trifecta. <laughs> yeah. Hey, put down the bunny. Hey, I mean, um, I have seen the other two. Yeah. Well, now I've seen all you've three. Seen, you've seen. Con yeah, Air. I've seen Con Air and I've seen The Rock. I've seen The Rock multiple times. I, yeah. The Rock and Bad Boys are why I. As bad as Michael Bay is, I'm unwilling to completely write him off. Cause no, I'm, sure. Yeah. I'm just like, oh, but he made The Rock. Like, <laughs> but when you, hey, and when you watch a, a Michael Bay film, you know, you know it's a Michael Bay film, and you can't say that about every director. You just can't. Yeah. So like, he has something going for him. I mean, he did pioneer a, a way of shooting action sequences. Yeah, that's- yeah. I saw an interesting video a long time ago about the way they shot that Battleship movie. How they, oh, were, God. how they were clearly trying to crib Michael Bay, but they were doing it wrong. And I was like, this yeah. is hilarious to watch because th- this video is actively showing you why Michael Bay actually knows what he's kind of doing. Right. <laughs> and like why? Because there's this shot, you know, they have the famous pan around shot. Of, yeah. Like, yeah. Will, it's Will like Smith the, the bad boys shot. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's a Michael Bay shot. It's in every Transformers movie. And then and they show the shot that they try to do in Battleship. And the thing is like, they're on what's his tits? Uh, I can't think of the character's name. It Taylor, doesn't matter. I think his name is Taylor <laughs> Chevron. Um, Taylor Kitsch. Kitsch is the actor. Yeah, he's the main character. I was called. Also, oh Rihanna. I don't in, remember. Also, any. Rihanna's in that. Yeah, film. I, I do remember Rihanna being. No, and there's aliens garbage. that have like porcupine spikes on them. I always call him Chan because he was played a character named Chan in right. Savages. Um, I have seen that. But they do the they do the pan. It's not a classic movie, but I'm going to recommend it for the podcast someday. Uh, but they do this pan around shot, and the only thing behind him is just the sky, so it's not dynamic at all. Uh, you oh, don't, like the, it just doesn't do anything with the pan. It doesn't make any sense. So it's like. It, it's just funny to see like Michael Bay getting crazy, but we're not talking about Michael Bay. We're talking about John Wu. We're talking about Face Off. I don't know that you we're can. Like I don't know that you can have the episode and haven't said anything. About I it. We're like twenty minutes in the episode. I don't know that you can have a discussion about Face Off and not mention Michael Bay. That's they're like cut from the same cloth. <laughs> like if, yeah, you, are, if you told yeah. somebody that well, Michael it's, Bay it's a, directed Face Off, no one would bat well, an eye. That's the thing about this is this. This feels like just a, like an action movie from the 90s that could be easily interchanged with any other action movie from the 90s. Like, I brought up Con Air. Like, if you watch Con Air Face Off, like, sure, they're different movies, but they're the same thing. Yeah, like, I, I think... Guy goes to jail, but he's really looking out for his family. Yeah, there's a family. <laughs> Nick uh, Cage. This one, <laughs> John Travolta forgets he has a daughter and doesn't <laughs> care about her. And I couldn't get over that. Yeah, that's, that's to me, that's... We can get into that in a second. Okay. But I do want to talk about John Travolta as a whole because it was weird going in this movie and being like, oh, he's our hero. Right. I forgot. He was like leading man guy for a while. It's it's easy to forget Mm -hmm. that because like basically you had your your Saturday Night Fever, John Travolta thing, and then he kind of fell out and then Pulp Fiction brought him back like super hard. Right. Um, And then nowadays he's like uh, kind of a creep. I guess. Well, um. <laughs> he likes to fly planes. I know <laughs> that. He? Yeah. I, I don't know. He played a, a rich bad guy in um, 
Swordfish. <laughs> it's not a super recent movie. Um, I know, but it was also but it was close to when this came out. Swordfish. Sure. Yeah. What has he done since? I can't even think of the most recent movie he's he been did in. A, he did a. He was a he's firefighter. In Savages. <laughs> was he? Yeah. He's an FBI agent in Savages. I don't remember that. Um, that's a movie nobody's seen, so I should probably stop I have seen that. It. I've seen oh, it, and he, I don't remember a, him. Yeah, Ladder 49. With, yeah, uh, he was a firefighter. In the, he, Ladder 49. Yeah, remember that film? No. With Joaquin <laughs> Phoenix? Yeah. Well, Joaquin uh, Phoenix. The, uh, the main theme song, Shine Your Light, by Robbie Robertson, was uh, the my first uh, song I danced to with my wife. So that's, that's something. <laughs> that's cool. I mean... If we're making John Travolta connections. Oh, uh, yeah. Neil that's... Neil might be a first for this podcast. Someone that's in a stable relationship. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> 13 years as of the recording. So that's I, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, yeah, it's just been the very single me and the, my very single friends. So yeah, including me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let's 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 do a podcast about that. Anyway. Um, so we're however many minutes in. And for any of you crazy people that are listening to this and haven't seen Face Off. I'm going to do a summary of the movie, and Joe and Neil can feel free to chime in. I'm going to try to make it brief. Um, basically, Nicolas Cage shot John Travolta's kid. John Travolta's real mad about it. Which he shot him, and then his kid got shot with yeah, the Yeah, we should make that clarification, Jake. He was shooting John Travolta, and the, and the kid was collateral damage. Sure. Right. But he knew what he was doing. Um, <laughs> shot him right in the back while he was hugging his kid. What did he think was going to happen? He had a sweet mustache at the time. So. That's true. He did have a pretty sweet mustache. Um, Not sure what that choice, I guess, to show the passage, passage of time. time. Yeah. Um, so... Uh, they managed to finally take down Nicolas Cage, who's so normally for this podcast, I just tend to say the actor names because the character names are hard to remember. But for the purposes of this podcast, I'm actually going to refor- refer. You, yeah, otherwise it'll get really. Yeah, good. I have to. So I actually made a note of their names. Nicholas Play- Cage and played. I, I do this semi amateurly. Uh, I can't talk. Uh, Nicholas Cage's character is playing. Nicholas Cage is playing a god damn it. I just want to shoot myself. Um, Nicholas Cage is playing a character named Caster Troy. John Travolta is playing a character named Sean Archer. Archer. Bob Archer. Archer. No. He he's Sean, Sean Archer. I know. Bob Archer is another. Don't character. confuse people. Archer. I like because I was like I'm gonna Archer the uh, yeah because I was like show. I'm gonna call him Archer but I was like that's kind of confusing to me because I watch Archer a lot. But Archer's the more interesting of the two names. Yeah. And ju- it's it's stupid because I'm going to have to call John Travolta's character Archer because that's the more memorable name, but that's his last name. And for Nicolas Cage, I call, they him, call Ka- him They call him by Archer. Like yeah. they, they they know what the more interesting name is, but that guy called uh, Cage's character Caster, even though that's his first Cass. name. Cass. Yeah. Well, you know, his name's Caster, and he starts the film as a pastor. <laughs> oh, there's... <laughs> yeah. Did you see what they did? Yeah. It was more of a and priest then, than a pastor. I don't oh, know if there's. Oh, a, I don't know oh, if there's a religious yeah, difference. Yeah, and he's there. headbanging to gospel <laughs> choir music. So they just had to open it with the most Nicolas Cage crazy. That thing. That, that moment is as Nicolas Cage as I think any film gets. That yeah. like moment. Yeah. To, to put the put the summary on pause real quick. That is worth noting. It, there there's like. 16 different meme worthy <laughs> moments just within the first five minutes of Nicolas Cage running around in a pastor outfit to the point where I've seen those. I've seen the head banging. I've seen the eyes. He does the same eyes as he does in vampires kiss. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, he, he does it a lot in this movie. Uh, like, <laughs> well, it's, just, it's crazy. Nicolas Cage eyes. Yeah. yeah. But I, I said in my, uh, so this movie is called face off. It basically, all of it is just a lead up to an excuse for, they, they need some information. So, Sean Sean Archer decides to take Caster Troy's face to try to get some information out of his brother. And while he's in prison, Caster Troy wakes up and takes Sean Austin's face. Sean Archer's face. Sean Austin, is it? Is that that's Rudy? Sean Aston. Sean, Sean Aston, Rudy. Um, yeah. But basically, they switch faces, and as one would do. Yeah. In that situation, <laughs> as one yeah. would do. Caster Troy tries to wreak havoc while uh, Sean Archer tries to get. Back to him. Eventually, the good guy wins, and he adopts. Or, oh a no! We're going son. straight to that. He, oh my god! He, he adopts Caster Troy's son as his oh aunt to replace god. the son. Well, it was like a weird spoiler, spoiler like alert. middle of the movie. We're like, oh, by the way, the bad guy has a son that looks like the good guy's son, and and then I'm just going to adopt him as a replacement. 
Yep. Well, that okay. Well, honestly, is, I I had never seen this film, and when the son, when Troy's son pops up in the middle of the film, I was like, oh, wouldn't it be funny if he just replaced him with his son? I was pretty sure that's like, what happened because I think I remember hearing about that, and so I, I don't think I don't think at the time I was being serious. Oh. I don't think. Well, but you, you, it you underestimated how crazy this movie is. <laughs> oh, um, I I did. So that's, a sum, that's a summary. Good guys win. Uh, <laughs> cast. Ten-year-old children are are interchangeable parts. Yeah, and the movie moves from set piece to set piece. A lot of gunplay. So yeah, the most interesting thing that I saw this movie is there. So um, when we're kind of talking about the plot, there's the plot of yeah, there's he when needs to get information, so forth, so on. He killed. A member of my family. The very first like real interaction we have between the two, the antagonist and the protagonist, is there's this gun scene, and the protagonist, who's John Travolta, Archer, says to Caster, "I have nothing to live for. You've taken ever, you've taken everything <laughs> from me." Um, we find out like a couple scenes later <laughs> that he has a son, or he has no. a daughter, yeah. and a wife. Um, yeah. So he has plenty to live for. No, like, he cared about his son, and he doesn't give a shit about his daughter, Neil. Yeah, yeah and like, there's so, this whole, like, subplot of, like, he keeps saying he has nothing to live for, but he, he already has a family. It's not like his son, like, was his only family member. Yeah, so it's 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 interesting. The movie starts with a really weird chase. Well, it's, it's a good well, no, chase the, the, scene, the very but... beginning of the movie is... Oh, the flashback. By the way, summary's over. We're getting into face-off the movie. It, 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 I guess it's a flashback. I don't know if you can call it a flashback if that's what the movie starts off doing. I don't even know what you call that. Um, sure, yeah. It just starts off like it's... Exposition. It's like black and white. They're at a carousel, which Joe predicted we'd see that oh, carousel Oh, yeah, that was again. my... I made a few predictions. <laughs> One was that since they started their feud at a carousel, we would get a final showdown at, the at a carousel, at a carousel, it doesn't have to be the same one. <laughs> it should have been the same one. In all. And then, and then I, I predicted that the son would be swapped out for his dead one. And one of those things came true. <laughs> yeah, that's, that is true. The slightly less uh, reasonable one. <laughs> yeah, I, slightly less, <laughs> slightly less than just them just going to a carousel. Well, the thing is, okay, so it, we're. I mean, you have to see the scene, but so Nicholas Cage, when he is John Travolta's character, aka Archer, like comes up to this kid and starts calling him Michael, and the kid's name's not Michael. That's his dead son's name. Yeah, and everyone's just like, ah, uh, this it's is a, PTSD, this is, Neil. Yeah, but then he's like, "Oh, well, I'm just going to keep you." And then he like, <laughs> "Well, yeah, he murders he, he murders his dad, right?" And then he's and like, "And his mom." And his oh yeah, that's true. He mur- uh, his murder. mom gets murdered. Yes, <laughs> he murders his father with a harpoon to the chest. And then he's like, "All right, just come live with me. You're yeah. just you're gonna get my old kid's room. Don't change anything. Just leave it the way it is." <laughs> yeah. Also, your name is Michael now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll, yeah. <laughs> Your first name is not your middle name, but we're going to call you by your first name. <laughs> so the flashbacks, the flashback was confusing to me because you see Nick Cage, he seems like he hesitates a little bit when he sees the sun. And it was, it tried to play it almost like he was taking the shot once the sun was out of the way, but he did it at the absolute worst time and shot. Yeah, there was Travolta the hesitation. Th- through yeah. the back and then killed the sun. And, and you feel like you kind of see Nick Cage feel bad about it, but like it doesn't seem to factor in. So... Yeah, that that scene happens, and then like we were talking about, there's it, it opens up with this insane runway scene. Like, I mean, I don't want to skip past it, but there's a whole thing with Nicolas Cage on a plane doing his what what I call the I don't know how famous the peach line is, but I know about the the, the peach. I could eat a peach for hours thing is and the suck my tongue. Yeah, suck my tongue. That's his thing. He likes people to suck on his tongue. Yeah, he's, well, he's just crazy. He's just a crazy. Guy that takes drugs. That, and that whole sequence is top Nick Cage form. Well, ba- second, his second best. Well, yeah, because ba- basically you got you got him in the priest outfit going crazy, <laughs> and then you got him on the plane, and that's all Nick Cage gets to establish his character before they're switching faces. True. So you can tell that they were just like go fucking crazy, and then Nick Cage was like this all crazy, right. and they were like, oh, uh, more, uh, sure, I guess, more. Uh, like. Uh, I didn't expect him to go that far, but he just goes all the way for it, yeah. and 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 you, I get it why they do that. I just, it, it's funny to me because that woman he tells to suck his tongue ends up being the FBI agent. I'm like, man, this chick's good at undercover. Yeah, except she whipped out her gun at the two, absolute like two sec- Well, it's like two seconds later too. And it's just so. like, well, it's just yeah. like pretend to ride the plane. Like, what are you gonna do? Right, I know. <laughs> what if they take off? You gonna or do you have a parachute? What's the deal? <laughs> that was just that was poor. 
poorly thought out, but you get this insane. And then she gets murdered. Let's not let's not glaze over that. Yeah, she the, gets murdered and, and then it, thrown out of the plane. <laughs> thrown out of and, a and that, plane. That looked brutal. Like it I, was really. There was brutal. a couple shots that were like, okay, that's a dummy, but it looked pretty brutal. Yeah, it actually I had a lot great. of its good stunt work in this. Movie. Know, but, but then Nick Cage makes my favorite face of the film when he's just like. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> yeah, because he's like, did I do that? He like <laughs> yeah. leads out the thing. And then John Travolta just jumps in a helicopter. And, and lands on the plane. Yeah, lands on the plane and manages to, to drive the helicopter while simultaneously shooting a gun out the window. I was like, wow, he's just a god, I guess. Uh, that, <laughs> yeah. that was insane. Well, he lands a helicopter on a plane. Just on a runway. So like it was, yeah. Just a explosion, lot of- explosion into a building. They have a big shootout. Um, yeah, the, and then that's and that's where we get them finally facing off. But they 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 go. Oh, they what go are they what off. are they doing? Facing off. Oh, I see. Face, so so the so what you're saying off. is the title has two meanings. That's about the only thing that has two meanings in this movie. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that's really uh, accurate. this movie's not very deep, um, but <laughs> or subtle in any way. <laughs> no. Like, like it's so not subtle that when it gets to that scene where they're staring at each other through the mirrors and they're looking at themselves, I was like, oh, that's clever. And I was like, in any other movie, I'd have been like, that's so fucking yes. ham-fisted. But this movie was like, like so- wow, yeah, they did something. <laughs> well, it was like, the, the, OK, so if it would have been more like subtle and like they would have just kind of turned around and shot at each other, it would have been an interesting idea. But they like they really linger on. Well, it. it's like takes a minute for them to look at the camera. It's like, oh, I'm looking at myself. I'm shooting myself. I kind of, I, I kind of felt the screenwriter being that was like the thing that the screenwriter was like, yeah, and then he like it's probably where like the very first idea that they had, and they then they like based the everything else around that <laughs> basically. But that's where we get you guys is. I, I didn't get quite as hung up on it as you guys did. I was amused, but because that's where they're like, you've only got one bullet left in your gun. Yeah, well, you've only got one bullet left in your gun. Well, shoot me, I don't have anything to live for, and <laughs> it was like, yeah. From, from, and then, obviously, you almost immediately get him coming home to his family. And <laughs> yes, it is almost immediately. And so it is It is funny, but it's like, I don't know. I, I, I enjoy a good character on the edge. So I mean, Sure, but, but, he's his, going but to his, retire too. his life, though, at home is fine. Well, it's not really. He's a terrible absentee father. Like, yeah. They, they, make I, it ve- they make it very clear that he's never home. Like, it's a big deal when he's like, I finally... Put an end to this case. Sure, and, and I, I get that. Like the only thing he's ever cared about is getting revenge for his son dying. So like that's all he's. But you would think that I don't know. It's just when after we saw, I couldn't get over that. Like I I well, was so hung up on that. Like the whole movie, we just kept making jokes about. Well, he's got nothing to live for. Like whenever he's talking to his daughters, like just remember, my son died. Hey, daughter. I wish the other one. Well, because that's was like a, still that's here, like a, not a you. Big plot of the movie is that he's getting revenge for his son. I, I so I have a theory that but the whole they daughter just, they they could just remove that. They could remove the I don't have anything to live for. Just take that out, See, and nothing changes. I think in the that film. scene was shot before they introduced the daughter plot. The daughter plot was like was like reshot scenes where. <laughs> That they uh, they're like, well, it doesn't make sense that you have nothing to live for. You need a daughter. You need some other family members. I was willing to ride on that theory until she was a major factor in the final showdown. But see, there was the replacement, Michael. I think he was originally going to be in that scene, or that final scene was actually shot last, and they put her in. He like, I don't think the kid would have been in the scene. Like, you could easily have that final showdown with the John Woo doves and everything, and not have the daughter be in it because like her role isn't super pivotal that makes sense i I could see it being the kid that's that's a fair point you didn't think that was like really comical what (laughs) he said he okay let's remove the daughter though like neil says he still has a wife that loves him like they're still together and like really holding out for like the day when he can hang it up i just don't even think i think with with john travolta's character or, or sean archer as we should probably call him um I, I think it's pretty clear, like, his relationship with his wife is negligible at this point at best. Sure. It's just, he, even in the scene where he's like, I'm going to get a desk job and everything's going to be great. There's just this weird... One last job before I retire. Well, well, this is before he decides he's going to take that one last job. He's straight up like, I'm getting a desk job. I killed Castor Troy. It's fucking done. Because this is before he knows about the bomb. And mm-hmm. that scene still, like, it's so flaccid and, and like... Uh, and just he's like she's like really and he's like yeah and it's, like I don't know if it's credit to John Travolta or just 
because you guys were pounding it in my head that he had nothing to live for at that point. But I was just like, no, he doesn't. He doesn't give a fuck about any of this. This isn't what he wants to do. He's just kind of like, now I'm just gonna. He's st- now he's got nothing to live for because he's already <laughs> killed his enemy. So yeah. now he literally has nothing to live for. Um, I did make a note of Cage's cool guns. Yes, they're, they're gold plated, gold plated 911s. Yeah. I mean, why not? Like, why not have? Awesome, cool, iconic. Well, yeah, well, he's he, got cool he this, holsters. Too. He had this weird, like Chinese theme because they were like, there's like dragons on them. He had like a dragon-headed paperclip. That oh yeah, the money clip. Yeah, um, he had like a big giant stack of hundreds, and it was like in this giant, like very <laughs> Chinese themed, and like that never came into play. But it was like he had theming that he was supposed to be. Maybe tied to like a the Chinese mafia or possibly the Yakuza. That just never maybe that was like originally a plot and just disappeared. But yeah, it's probably just Nick Cage. Or it could have been just Nick Cage, like <laughs> literally bringing his own props to the set. I mean, John Woo loves his double guns. Oh yeah, I guess it is John Woo. Maybe John Woo just brought um, him from. I mean, it previous. is John Woo, the Chinese director. And why, why not? And he's probably not Chinese. That's probably racist as fuck to say. I don't know. No, because his, his original like uh, his movies were Chinese films, weren't they? Like his, I think so, but I'm not 100 percent sure. I mean, we he could all be really. Racist. He did the he did know. the Red Cliff movies. I have to assume he gives a shit about Chinese culture. I was surprised at how that th- this all happens, and then I was like, it felt like it got into the positing the idea of the face swap very quickly, very um, quickly. Yeah, no. ba- basically it's the only thing that we can possibly do to solve this problem. It just jumps into it immediately, like basically like everything's done, and they're like, there's a bomb, and it just we gotta swap faces. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just immediately they're just like so check out this doctor he could totally swap your face look at him put this ear on this guy yeah yeah it's he old- th- hey he 3d printed an ear though hey that's that's, that's way, way ahead of it with time. lasers yeah, yeah, with lasers. Yeah, <laughs> that's way ahead. I just of was because sh- like they're just in, like like in in the lady that's talking to him about it is so fucking on board for it. She's just like, no, it will be great. You should swap faces. No one will ever know. And John Travolta's yeah. character, to his credit, he's like, I. I I, I don't, this doesn't seem, seem I yeah. feel like I could just be a normal police officer right. and solve this problem. And then he like interviews three people and he's like, fuck it. We're swapping <laughs> That's faces. true. No, that's true. He does try it by the book <laughs> yeah. first. Well, he interviews, yeah, but he interviews like three people and it's like each of those interviews, one guy shits his pants and he just gives up. <laughs> um, another guy just kind of like says, I'm not talking to you. And the third one's like, well, I haven't seen him in 10 years. I think he manages to get the fact that it's happening on the 18th out of somebody. Right. I think Gina Gershon's brother. Yeah, because well, she's the good one. Is it really Spoilers, the brother? But... That's so well, weird no, that they yes, kiss that, later. Okay, that's another really <laughs> weird, creepy dynamic is so there's there's the two. I mean, did I mishear that or were they supposed to be No, they siblings? were supposed no, to be No, they were, yeah. But like later in the movie, they have this long French kiss, <laughs> which is. Really... No, it's not a long French kiss. It is, it is not a Peck on no, the it's, cheek or it's, lips. It's, it's, on, it's a French kiss. It's uh, that actor specifically just wanted that role so he could kiss Gina Gershon. Oh gosh, <laughs> uh, I, it's it's definitely I, not a brother sister. I kiss. do have to say this is the scene where we do meet Gina Gershon and not Vanilla Ice. I'm just calling <laughs> that guy not Vanilla Ice because he looks like Vanilla Ice to me. <laughs> sure, he's bald. And that's why he's not Vanilla Ice. Oh okay, um, got it. But Gina Gershon, I fucking love Gina Gershon so much, and I feel like she doesn't get enough credit. She ha- she hasn't done a lot of that's, films. See, that's that's think. the thing. She I, has done a lot of. Films. I was doing some little IMDb bullshit, and so Nick Cage is someone who I assume has been in like 200 movies. Oh yeah. On IMDb, his acting credits is 95. That's a that's a lot. Gina Gershon, 143. What? <laughs> wow. <laughs> the girl. What? That girl works. Like, I I I love her. She's. I mean, I've seen a she, she's several in one, of her movies, but I, I, I mean, she's in one of my favorite bad movies of all time, uh, Showgirls. Uh, right. That's well. That's an infamous movie. Well, and yeah. she was in. Um, she was in uh, Killer Joe. <sighs> yeah. Like somewhat recently. So that's my thing with with her is like I feel like she's I I I, I want to like check up on her career because I'm curious what all she's done because I feel like the things I see her in just seem like such bullshit roles for her because in Killer Joe she's in the famous the famous right. scene from Killer Joe where she basically yeah I know. has to blow a chicken drumstick yeah, I think it's, it's great just like, it's just like Tina Gershon <laughs> really like I, I don't know I'm not gonna judge people for their choices but I, I can't imagine that she was like yeah give me that role I, I want to uh, and then recently, I was watching a uh, crashing that Pete Holmes show. I don't know what that is. Yeah, um, I'm not familiar. I mean, with do you either. at least know who Pete Holmes is? No. no. <laughs> really? Maybe. 
He's a very good stand-up comedian that had a really funny sketch show for a while. Okay. Um, he's got a show on HBO called Crashing where he basically plays a shitty version of himself uh, <laughs> trying to become a stand-up comedian. And I watched this episode where Pete Holmes is hanging out with Artie Lang. Do you guys know who Artie Lang is? Yeah. Yes. Gina Gershon shows up and she's this f- fan and her like whole thing is she just is there to like fuck Artie Lang. And I was like, Oh sure. It's like really Yeah, that's realistic. <laughs> like and, and, yeah, it seems about right. I was just yeah. like like I'm like you're really playing this character whose mission in life is to blow Artie Lang. That's that's seems rough. I don't and not the well, there's a yeah, there's a there's a joke in Family Guy where they're like, Oh, she's hot, but like Gina Gershon hot or something like that. Whatever. Which, what? Okay. I, I don't get it. I don't I don't necessarily agree with it. I'm just saying <laughs> that's a like a thing. I love Gina Guy. Gershon. I think she's great. I, I, I'm always excited when I see her and I forgot she was in this movie. Um so when she showed up in that interrogation scene, I was like, Yes. Because I knew she was gonna be a factor because she's Gina Gershon. Well she was um, I mean, I would say her star faded. Like by the mid two thousands, mid aughts. Just for the, the record, though, crashing. She was in that last year, and she still looks amazing. So, go Gina Gershon. Blowing chicken wings. Yeah, <laughs> she's in uh, Brooklyn Nine Nine as well. Oh, yeah. oh, that's good. I just like her a lot. I, I'm just always happy when I see her. She does establish that she has a son in this scene. I had actually already known that it was Nick Cage's son when when she said that. It was later in the movie. She's like. And this is your son. It's supposed to be a twist. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, oh, I already knew that. I forgot about that. They do kind of establish that dynamic early on. But so John Travolta's like, fuck it. We're swapping faces. And so they have a they have a fun surgery scene that was. That's pretty good. I'm going to say it's pretty good. It's pretty well done. Um, especially especially the voice part, I think, is pretty well, well done. Well, because you, you brought up, like, how are they going to do the voices? I was just literally saying that because I. I, they covered their bases. They thought, yeah. of, they thought about it, at least. Which I, 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 I totally I put past this movie. I didn't think they would even care. Like, it's just like, <laughs> yep, there he's, he's the other guy now. They, like, try, they try to explain away, basically, all the stuff. They're like, we're going to modify your body. Yeah. And you'll have this Get rid of thing. your fat, your extra yeah. fat, and pump and, up and, your and, chin. You know, Neil kept bringing up that they don't have the same blood type, which is extra funny because it's like, yes, I'm pretty sure that would fuck up the face transfer. But then it becomes a major plot Yeah, point. it does. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> which. <laughs> I my wife was a phlebotomist at one point, so I know like one of the blood types is like like a uh, universal. I can't remember if it's O or if it's A B. Oh, one of them's A B and one of them's o. o. It's O. Yeah, so one of them is O. I can't remember which one. So one of them would I think be fine because that's universal. I believe other- that uh, Sean Archer is O because later when she tests the blood, it comes it up as A B, and yeah. she's like, "Oh no, it's not my husband." Yeah, um, I don't even know my own blood type. I don't either. I asked my parents yeah. about it recently, and I was like, I need to get that tested because I was thinking about donating plasma, and I have no idea what my fucking blood type is, which is yeah, insane. I, well, I used to donate blood regularly, and I still don't know. They didn't um, tell you? No, I did. I, I'm pretty sure it was O. I'm pretty sure I'm O because they would like call me a ton to try to donate, which is fine. Like I did. I, I had to stop for a while because I got a tattoo, and... Hmm. Unfortunately, they have kind of draconian rules when yeah. it comes to tattoos. Like, uh, oh, you had a needle? It's like, yeah, bitch, you've been putting a needle in me like every other week. Like, <laughs> right. what the fuck? Uh, yeah, it's it's funny to me because like I'm super into like Japanese culture, and they're like obsessed with blood types over there. Yeah, that's like, like a like, yeah. like every anime character, you know what their blood type is. It's yeah, like that's like thing. part of their bio. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it's like how much we care about like zodiac signs over here. Uh, they're like that with blood types. Like that. Like your there's blo- like a mythological yeah, aspect. Your to blood it, yeah. type like affects your personality. Yes, and stuff like that. But that's neither here nor there. They swap faces. He he recovers insanely fast. Um, well, yeah. I mean, how long is that bomb supposed to be? I felt it's like, like a matter. Of I days, felt like at right? one point they said well, it was like in six days. Yeah. And then when he goes to jail, he's got two days to like get the information. Okay, the jail for two days thing. We well, need to I, hold on. Hold on. We need to stop right there for a second because I no, no, I no, couldn't so they, get they, over. But this. they explain like the scarring and stuff because they see the ear get put on the other guy. Like that's the setup for the. Whole oh, this technology exists. They laser away right. the scars. No. So. I, oh, right. I know. But the two days thing is what is more important. Because I could Before you get to that, though, I want right. to talk about the technology of, like, the face-off. Like, so it's an interesting idea that surgery can do it. From a script writing and, I think, story point, it would have made more sense if they somehow could have traded brain waves. Because that would have made things... What's more way- believable? Yeah. Neither. But I know, I know. But seriously, like, sure. Yes. Keep, they the surgery I mean, thing is they wouldn't have to explain away the voice thing and like the belly fat and the scars and like the chest hair. And but everything. then you wouldn't have gotten that great thing where he wants the scar and it was going to go away. 
it's super important to his character. Sure. Yeah. Now, I mean, cl- this script was clearly someone thought of Face Off as a title. Yes. And they're like, and they the title sw- came and they before sw- the movie. <laughs> they swap what if, faces. Or, or, and this or, movie does a lot. Or, or they took their a, face off for their face off. I, I have a better theory. They took a he huge pit, part. He pitched it. He pitched the film Face Off without the actual face swapping part. It got turned down, and he's like, wait, what if it's literal? What if it was originally a hockey <laughs> movie where it was like a fa- they're doing right. a face off? John Travolta <laughs> versus Nicholas Cage, Nicolas Cage a hockey in a movie. hockey film with Gordon Bombay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, Emilio no, I think I think that's what happened. They got turned down, and then he came back and said, all right, I've it was, got it. was it. a hockey movie, and he's like, no, 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 hockey's not popular enough. What if they actually take their faces off? Yeah, yeah, and they greenlit it. I mean, it's a double this, meaning. This, this movie is an interesting animal in that it does so much legwork to try to justify what's going on in the movie. Jo- Joe's really hung up on this two days thing because because he kept saying Joe kept being like, "Well, they're supposed to come get him in two days." And yes, kept, that's the whole plan. And I kept being like, "Joe, the only three people that know about any of this all got no." Burned to death. No, that's insane. There, there's who's gonna well, pick him up? Just the sports just staff, that, the, right? The who, all the crew that put his fucking face on his face. Yeah, like, two of two of them were agents. Only one of them was the wh- doctor. What about the like? What about his like partners that were back at the FBI? Like, did they just think he went away for like? Yeah, a they week? specifically said he's in the swamp. At one point, oh, okay. they're like, "Oh, you can't," because when they're when okay, they're, when they're sending no, Caster, when, when they're sending him, he's he's got Nick Cage's face, but he's Sean Archer now. Yep. When they're putting him on the helicopter, they're like, "Oh man, Archer's not going to be happy about this." They're like, "Well, fuck it, he's in the swamp. He's not going to hear about it anyway." They, uh, they have like okay. they have all, they, all right. no, I know that's I what this movie that. does. It's got all these weird fucking throwaway lines to try to justify all this bullshit all the time. It's like, like I get it, it, it but no, it's my, it's, my point. My point is that. It almost pays too much. If this movie had just been balls the wall crazy, I don't even think we'd be asking these questions because we just would have been like, it's fine, movie logic. <laughs> but they try to like answer all the questions and it just creates more questions. Well, it's also <laughs> like, it's they it's, were going to pick him up in two days. All right. They were going to pick him up. That was the Those plan. Those guys were dead. They, they they showed us in a flashback them right. getting covered in gasoline. Okay. I know. Yeah. They showed it like five. They kept <laughs> c- cutting back to it like five times. But, but. <laughs> No, okay. So everybody thinks he's a, he's actually the guy and he's a real prisoner. So some just random person shows up and be like, "All right, two, it's been two days." And the J, this highly secured, like off the books, well, like yeah, pri- that was prison weird that was like point. in the middle yeah, but, of the but, but, ocean. Well, it was like it was like in international waters and like it's it was they, like they this, didn't have to adhere to the Geneva Convention. Well, it's and like all clearly the prison for like the baddest of the bad people. I know, but Jake, my point is, well, no also- one knew about it, and they're just gonna show up and be like, well, here, "All right." Sure. Well, here's Thank my you. here's my thing with that though. Go ahead. Cast Troy with John Travolta's face shows up later and goes, "Yeah, you need to let this guy out because I said so." And they do. Yeah. Like That's, they're like they're like, "Oh, yeah. Pollock needs to come talk to us." And they're like, "Where's Pollock going?" He's like, "He's getting a deal." And I was just like, "Okay." Well, that whole that whole like <laughs> plot of like this super max. It's like a, it's a weird like dystopian sci-fi trope almost. And with like, the magnet boots, with magnet magnet boots, boots and they play deer nature stuff on the yeah. TV all day. It's like, it's like super dystopian running man type stuff. It's it's only like a minor subplot and they don't explain any of it and it is dropped like immediately as soon as they get out of this. Which is why it's so weird they seem to put so much thought into it. Yeah. Like, well, I mean like the, the, the design of it's pretty well done. Like it's it's well thought out. People it's, put, it seems like somebody had an idea for an entire movie that was based around that. <laughs> they, they had like the props and everything <laughs> already made and, and then like off. funding got pulled. I mean that's a lot of fucking mag- think, magnet boots to put on people I, for, I, hey. for a, a chunk of the movie that's only like 15 minutes long. they kind of look like the boots that were in the mario movie <laughs> oh yep they just had some mario boots like yeah around. i Why feel not? like i've heard before that something involving the mario stuff was repurposed at some point <laughs> oh god i hope that that's what it I was i wonder if it was specifically that i um, really hope that's what it was i was actually doing research because i was telling these guys a story about how nick cage wanted to be in a movie just to get his eye shot out <laughs> and i was trying to remember and what we it, know why now well, yeah, because yeah. there's a lot of eye shooting in this movie, or <laughs> potential well, he's eye shooting. Li- he's, like, pressing the gun up to his eye. Nick Cage's, I think. Yeah. He's like, he, no, I want that role. <laughs> um, I want to be the other guy. What I had said was uh, that he that it happens in Season of the Witch. I was wrong. What happened was he was promised that it would happen in Season of the Witch, and then it didn't happen. Oh, no. And then, and then the people that made... 
<laughs> okay, so I sorry I just interrupted Jake, but his prediction was a hundred percent correct. It hey, was, I need some credit for that. It was because I recognize the fucking prop. It was the prop. So the, the the boots used from the movie were actually from the Mario movie. So congratulations, nailed it, hundred percent. That explains a lot. Uh, I ha- I've seen that film. And I hadn't seen this Which to- one. It's a total, total drop <laughs> wrong. John, John Leguizamo would have fit perfectly into this movie. I don't know why he's not in it. Uh, yeah. Uh, but With Mario boots. <laughs> just would have played Luigi again. Just no no context. Just, hey, Luigi. That's amazing. That they Because Mario's a big property. Like That, that movie tanks it, so hard wow. that they're yeah. like, nobody will notice. <laughs> <laughs> and then we just use this big prop from that movie. I, I recognized it like 25 years later. <laughs> <laughs> what Subconsciously. A, what an insane movie the Mario movie was. <laughs> like, that has some iconic imagery. Like the Goombas like are to me are like super iconic. The, ca- the cast is crazy because you get freaking Dennis Hopper as Bowser. Yeah. And John Leguizamo as Luigi. And uh I feel terrible for blanking on his name, but I love him. The guy who played Mario the, from Roger Rabbit. Uh, yeah, Bob Hoskins. Bob, Bob Hoskins. Hoskins. Yeah. I love Bob Hoskins. Bob, Bob Hoskins in a, a movie that I recommended once uh, on this podcast in my recommendations, Doomsday. No one's oh. ever seen it. I love Doomsday. Oh, yeah. That's a post-apocalyptic thing. Yeah. I recommended it after like I watched it. There's cannibals or something in it? Yeah, there's a, there's a cannibal faction and there's okay. a medieval faction. Okay. It's pretty great. It's okay. starring Rona Mitra. Yeah, and but, didn't, didn't it come out around the same time as like Aeon Flux? I think it was like a 2007 movie. Okay. That's the Aeon Flux time frame. Well, Aeon Flux, the, the movie, not the right. TV show. Anyway, pr- yeah, the prison stuff goes on for a while. It's insane. It's really convoluted and weird, but Nick Cage makes this really... Er, I say Nick Cage. Cat Sean Archer. Archer with, oh, oh, Sean Archer. Sean it's Archer, Archer as, as with Nicolas Cage's face. <laughs> Although I should note that I believe it's while he's still in prison, there's a scene where it cuts to, from him being sad in his cell, cell to Castor Troy with John Travolta's face fucking his wife. Uh, I believe that happens at this point. Yeah, that was a very explicit <laughs> sex scene. I mean, well, we were. I mean, it's not like we literally see penetration or anything, but like, it, like it went on too long. I felt like it was. It was just weird. It was just like. Well, it was like one of those things. Like, okay, it, it, you get the idea that he has sex with his wife, but like the scene, the whole process takes like ten minutes of him like seducing her, and it's like, okay, we we well, get he, it. And I he, listen. He prepared that nice lobster meal, and they didn't eat it, and so well, that is complete. Completely. I think it's so like from our modern like <laughs> sensibilities, the reason why those like these like scenes that we're talking about, most of what we're talking about are parts that aren't driving us to the action scenes. Because that was like the like 80s and 90s and early 2000s actions movies where it was just like exposition to get us to the next action scene. Sure. And that's kind of what this movie does. But like there are these odd scenes that were they're more doing either more story bits or more. Um, exposition, and they're just, like, all those scenes are kind of awkward. What's weird about this movie is, cast of Troy with John Travolta's face early in the movie, and then, like, in the midpoints, there's scenes that seem like we're trying to not even quite re- rehabilitate cast of Troy, but... Oh, yeah. But there's scenes, yeah, yeah, where yeah. scenes where we're like, oh, maybe cast of Troy is not even... It's not that he's not well, that bad of a guy, but... So, we have him seducing the wife, and, like, yeah... It, like at the end of the day, he just seems like he's doing what he has to get with her. But he's like treating her really nice. He's treating her really nice, and he does a lot for the daughter. Too. Well, yeah, well, the, the daughter scene is the big one. But yeah. in between that is a scene that I think is possibly the most important. What I thought was going to be the most important scene for his character, but doesn't matter at all later. They go to visit the graveyard and they oh, visit yeah. the son, which is like such a good idea on paper. Castor Troy as John Travolta has feeling to go, bad for killing has, his kid has to go see the yeah. kid and 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 revel in it, but they they don't do a lot with that scene he just kind of looks and goes uh and then like it doesn't seem to factor in it all later well, it, yeah well, it, uh, it, it didn't do anything it wasn't like it didn't dehumanize him by like, saying oh i really don't care about this and it also didn't like give him more humanity it just it happened it, the only remember when this happened well, no the only the only like point of it was to say hey he forgot that it was his son's day that he or his birthday like that's that's the whole it was like a waste of everyone's time. Like, hey, he forgot his son's birthday. You know, I was just so him. excited when that when she's like, "It's we have to go," and I immediately knew what she was talking about. I was like, "Oh, they're going to go to the graveyard. This is going to be great." And then they don't. The only thing that happens is he goes to the office later, and they're like, "Oh, you're late." And he's like, "It's my son's birthday," and they're all like, "Oh," and. <laughs> 
Uh, I was just like, okay. And yeah, I mean, the scene when she when he pulls Hyde out of a car and, and bashes his face in and stuff yeah, is, is yeah. fun. And it seems because, like... Because if anybody's going to sleep with my daughter, it's going to be me. <laughs> yeah. That was, yeah. There's like a weird sexual subtext when... Well, he licks Caster her face. Is. He licks her face. It's well, just, that's, that's, that's the later... That's like later on. But like... the. When he's still trying to play the dad, he's like there's staring like this weird at her sexual butt tension. And stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, they they sexualize the daughter super hard, and I don't know how old she's supposed to be in this movie. High school, uh, I think. Um, I mean, yeah, she's got to be in high school. But they're just like, look at her in her underwear. Isn't this great? I'm just like, uh, John, yeah. John, it's John, the 90s, John. No, yeah, no, John. This is, this is definitely a <laughs> '90s ish. I think that's one of the big flaws with this movie is every time I think they're doing something with Caster Troy as a character, it just turns out that they're not. Like <laughs> he, he doesn't give a fuck about Gina Gershon. He doesn't give a fuck about his own son. Well, uh, so like you, you would think that like he'd have the stuff with the son and he'd learn to be a family man just a little bit and he'd be a little more empathetic towards Sean Archer and you'd think like the final showdown, but he's just full on evil. And he just, well, there could have been a redemptive plot because Gina Gershon's character is speaking to. Um, at the time, it's Archer, who's in Nicolas Cage's body. She's speaking to him, like, very lovingly, and, like, she cares about Archer. Or, no, I'm sorry, Cast. So it's really confusing. Caster. <laughs> like, speaking to this evil guy, like, he was actually, like, a pretty good guy and, like, actually cared for her. And the reason why he kind of abandoned her was because he didn't want to get the kid involved in it. At least that's the, what I... The vibe that I got just well, he, kind of goes well. I don't nowhere. know about that. I think because, you're giving him too much credit. Yeah, because because like she tries to reveal that it's his son as if it's a big reveal. Because she's like, oh, I didn't ever tell anybody that it was your son because I didn't want them okay. to come after him. So it was her I, thing. Not yeah, his. I think it's okay. implied that he didn't actually realize that it was his. I, I think he just didn't give a fuck. Like, but she she seemed okay with like him being like a father like at that point at least. Sure, so. and it's like she 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 saw him back, and I think she saw a chance to maybe. And he seemed like different. The th- the thing that's interesting with this movie is you you have Travolta and Cage who have to play each other with their built in mannerisms. Yeah, and, and like Travolta. For, for whatever you want to say about him, these, well, for whatever you want to say about him these days, he does a pretty decent job of trying to capture the Nick Cage isms. Yes. in this movie, Nick Cage is just a slightly more subdued Nick Cage. Yeah, and he still gets to kind of Nick Cage out because he's basically unhinged Travolta. Well, he's uh, he has to he's a Nick Cage that has to try to play Nick Cage to fool everyone. Right. So he just ends up playing Nick Cage mostly. Yeah. So I feel like Travolta's doing a lot of good work in this movie. But I think the unsung heroes are Gina Gershon and Joan Mitchell. Is that your name? Uh, I don't, I'm uh, not sure. Uh, there is a, there is a Sh- s- Sean Archer's wife. Cause like there's a lot being asked of these characters where I feel like Gina Gershon, you're supposed to kind of pick up that she's like, Oh, he seems different. And and then with, with uh, Sean uh, Archer's wife, you can tell she's like, something's a little off here. And then she like, really has a chunk of the movie where she gets to shine when she goes to test the blood. She has a scene with Nick Cage later and who's Sean Archer in Nick Cage's body. And she's kind of like, I'm realizing that you're my husband, but you don't look like him, but it's weird. But you know, I, I'm empathizing with you. I was just like, like that, that whole scene, I was like, Holy shit. She's like fucking murdering it right now. Yeah. Like like some of the, you have a lot of really good character actors in this movie. That's not, that interested in character actors being character actors uh, and, and doing their thing. It's there like, were definitely surprising moments. Yeah. yeah. They're like, hey, they thought about that I, I and executed that, it. The, if we're talking about like our, our favorite like standout scenes, there was a scene that kind of, it was near this, I can't remember exactly where it took place, but Nicolas Cage does actually like show that he can't act at one point. Like he's having kind of a breakdown uh, mental scene, like where he's like talking about how he basically misses his family or something to that effect. It was pretty well acted, like it was believable and everything. That was that was probably the, my favorite scene. Is his coming at least is the most believable. The action scenes we haven't really talked much about the actual action scenes because there's they're just popcorn action film yeah stuff. But they're good. I the action scenes are, are there's not a ton to dig into. They're memorable for their set pieces because you have. Um, I feel like I'm forgetting one in the middle because you have your prison riot breakout, obviously, and then he. Well, bre- you've got the first. You've got the first. You've got your uh, the runway scene that leads into the warehouse. Scene. Sure. Your prison breakout. There was the I the big I, I the raid. Next, I think our next action set piece, yeah, is when Nick Cage goes to Gina Krishan's brother's pad in the SWAT team raids. Yeah. Um, which is which is great because you, you you get a little bit of Cage versus Travolta in that scene. I think that's when the mirror scene happens. Yes. Um, which is great. 
You get Gina Gershon just fucking mowing people down, and it's glorious. <laughs> and she's supposed to be the good guy. She's yeah, going she's, she's, you're, supposed, you're supposed to like sympathize with her as as like, she's a, a mother all. or whatever, and she's just mowing down cops. Although I'd be remiss if I didn't say the scene right before that all jumps off is probably another iconic scene where Nick Cage is like, "I'm gonna get to Sean Archer, and I'm gonna take his face <laughs> off." Hey, yeah, yeah. You're gonna face. you're gonna what? I'm gonna take his face off. Got it. Put it in the trailer. <laughs> I'm sure it's in the trailer. Uh, I mean, that's that's pretty iconic. But that shootout's great. J- John Woo does a good job of making everything really chaotic, but not like enough to like. It's lose. controlled chaos. Yeah, I still understand what's happening in the scenes. People are getting shot, and and there's lots. There's just cool shit happening all the time. You know. Well, he has his he has his ticks of people jumping and shooting. Like that's like the most infamous with doves. Jump. Well, floating. that happens later. There's on, a, there's but, a fun there's a fun thing where like a SWAT guy comes down on a rope, and Sean Archer as Nick Cage like knocks him out the window, and then he comes swinging back, and he yeah. just like elbows him in the face, and then you got you got the added weight of the sun kind of just wandering around almost getting shot half the time it's it, it's a real fun a lot of people die <laughs> there was there was the greatest line from that scene was the uh, the brother the bald-headed uh, as you described him <laughs> not uh vanilla not vanilla ice, ice um, where he just yells i hate cops and then shoots a cop <laughs> yeah he just shotguns a cop and just like, i hate cops <laughs> it's like uh what a dream roll <laughs> <laughs> i couldn't tell yeah. Yeah, and then he gets shot in the neck and kisses Gina Gershon, which is weird. Because that's his, yeah, yeah. It's so funny because he seems like such a scumbag, but the only things we see him actually do in this movie are, are not lying. rat out his friend <laughs> and protect a child. <laughs> yeah. <that's>, <laughs> <laughs> well, he, no, he does drugs, Joe. He does drugs. Well, they, they just keep being like, oh, you Do we see him do that, though? Well, yeah, they, they no, drink that, pull, whatever that, that drink is that, yeah. that, oh, make, that makes yeah, him yeah, all yeah. fucked up. But Well, it fucks up Nicolas Cage. We never see him get fucked uh, up. He's, he's presumably, to he's used to it yeah. but it's just so funny because they just try to establish like oh he's such a scumbag you still running drugs you still running drugs and then the only things we actually i mean he kills a lot of cops they're attacking him. He's, all in he's an effort to save a child yeah, yeah. it's just so funny he like just seems like such a stand-up guy i know <laughs> it's so funny he's just trying to make an honest living you know <laughs> Well, he doesn't even get killed by the cops. He gets killed by a uh, caster. Yeah. And John Travolta's Which body. I was, I, I'm going to ask you guys. Which, oh, yeah. Because, like, so you, you have John uh, John Travolta's body being helmed by caster, and he's aiming, and he seems like he's aiming at Gina Gershon. Yeah, I didn't understand that whole Because the brother kind of dives in front of him. Well, he like act in- inadvertently steps out. I think doesn't he? Well, no, he sees he sees no, that it's going to happen. Definitely, he like, he's definitely there to stop. Yeah, the he bullet. like jumps okay. in front with his back to them, trying to like guard them. Yeah. And I was just confused. It was like, was Caster? What was Caster's aim in that moment? Was he? Did he know the brother would do that, or was he legitimately like? But they were both his former friends. Yeah, so I don't know, I don't why know he'd what shoot he was. Any of them. I don't know what he was after. In, in Guys, let me let me. Well, he had the kid. Hold on, hold on. Trying to shoot the kid. Hold on, let me just clear it up. <laughs> let me clear it yeah, up. He for shoot you. The no, it's kid? his own kid. Does he just got? He doesn't kid. know it's his own kid. He just and kids. He, he, he doesn't. He doesn't know it's his kid, and he has a thing against ten year old kids that have blonde hair. But let me let me let me simplify for you. Pumpkin pie haircuts. All, <laughs> all that matters is that he's bad guy. That's that's the thing is like I kept expecting <laughs> more out of his character, and they just keep defaulting. No, they, to no, they keep bad. hinting at it. They do keep hinting at it. No, like, that's he's bad guy, and he shoots people. He's real bad. I, I just I don't know. That's literally all you need to know about that character. He's bad guy. Mm-hmm. His face got taken off, and he he didn't like it. Yeah. Sean Archer in Nick Cage's body gets to meet his lookalike son. He has that <laughs> weird freak out where he's like Michael. Michael, 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 yeah. and Gina yeah. Gershon's like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> like, it's not his name. What are you doing? <laughs> um, he's just. I'm going to take you home with me. It's just so funny. Like, there's scenes. There's scenes where he just like you're supposed to be like, oh, Sean the Archer is just broken and completely off his rocker. But it, they don't because he has to be so competent for huge chunks of the movie. I keep forgetting that he's also like kind of crazy. Like, so right. when he does that Michael thing, he just seems so fucking weird when he's doing that. Um, it's a bizarre. I oh, I also also this scene is where Pollux dies, which is weird. Oh uh, yeah, they so they try to do like a justification of why Caster becomes so adamantly bad and wants to kill him is because he killed his brother. We haven't really mentioned the brother at all. <laughs> yeah. uh, Nicholas Cage, aka Caster's brother, is like this. He he looks like um, the hacker from Goldeneye. Um, Alan Cumming as as Boris. Boris, yes. <laughs> 
Boris, Invincible Boris. That's a that's a nineties art. Very nineties. He, I mean, he is a hacker, mm-hmm. and he is yeah. does wear those big circular glasses. And he made a bomb. And he made a bomb. And he sounds yeah. like the guy from Galaxy. <laughs> a, a, a bomb, which is like supposed to be such a major plot point that we haven't talked about it at all. Well, because they because we they do away with it. Yeah, it's, like it's, that. <laughs> you think that that's going to be the the big driver for the film, but it's not. No, it just ends up being a thing where John Travolta just, or I mean. Cast of Troy as John Travolta goes in and just disarms it. And he's like, I'm a hero now, which also, like, I think it's supposed to give us an excuse for why he's got such free reign to kind of just right. keep doing shit. Yeah. But, well, that, I mean, that's kind of the plot is, is that it goes to, like, hey, he's going to infiltrate the FBI, and that's going to, he's basically going to be like a in the pocket of these g- gangsters or terrorists. Yeah. Or, and I don't know. He, it just, but then his brother his justification for them to do yeah, other stuff. his brother's like there during the raid for some reason and he's on the roof and then Nick Cage just like murders him or I mean no Archer murders Archer him. Sean Archer as Nick Cage murders him you get a funny scene where Casa Troy as John Travolta is like crying over the body and some dickhead cop just like walks up he's like hey why, why are you crying man why are you so upset and he's just like <laughs> and like shoots him in the head I was just like what the like like they, like, they, like I get it. You're kind of like, why are you why are you upset? But it's just such a weird. Why moment. do you give a shit about yeah. that guy? <laughs> why do you care about the bad guy? What are you, some kind of girl? <laughs> um, but yeah, I have written here the wife gains some agency because that's the scene where Archer as Nicholas Cage shows up at the house and he's like, oh, blah blah blah, I'm crazy, and she's kind of like, hmm, that's fucking weird. But I'm gonna I'm gonna follow up on this. I I enjoyed getting to see her do some stuff finally because. She just kept having to be the wife that was at home. I and I hate I hate like the naggy wife trope. And she that she is was one never thing a naggy they, wife. Yeah, though. they handle that decently in this movie where she's never quite naggy. She's just sad. She's like, I would like to have a husband who loves me and is home for his daughter. And I'm also sad that my fucking son was murdered too. It's not just you. Yeah. You're not the only well, one. Well, no, he's no, no, no. <laughs> the they had a special relationship, and he has nothing to live for. <laughs> that, that, Clearly. Yeah. Clearly. Clearly. No, she, yeah, it, was just, it was just nice seeing her do stuff, and she kind of stands up for herself a little bit, and and it's fun. And I think and she ends up getting folded into the plot. You know, She's like, okay, we're going to get him at the funeral. And he's like, well, you got to be safe. And she's like, well, I got to go. And I even like the scene where Castor as Travolta is like, where's the daughter? Why is she not here? And she's like... She ran off, and she's like, she won't even visit your dead son's grave. Why the fuck is she going to go to your goddamn boss's? Which I guess we should mention that scene with the boss. Um. <laughs> oh, he, yeah, he just murders the he murders his boss, or Caster Which, murders Archer's boss. With yeah, a karate chop With a karate neck. chop to the neck. I guess it was a heart attack. Uh, he said it was a heart seizure. So, so, I don't heart know if seizure. either of you guys caught this, but I had no fucking clue what Archer's branch of police was F- supposed to be FBI, it was the yeah, FBI. they were the FBI yes because they have this really or maybe bold- the CIA or no some of the some of the well some of the cops had FBI gear on oh during the raid yeah or- because cause he has this bullshit throwaway line where he's like, oh, I'm sorry. We're just such a secret, super special operative unit that no one even gives a shit about what we do. Like, right. He no, says that, that is like the definite like, thing that they, that they make But like, they don't specifically about. say what they are. And I was like, are they just... And the- it's so secret that there's top secret face-off <laughs> operation. Yeah. Well, they, no one knows about it except two people. Nope, because they're a super secret operation. They laid the, they laid the track for that well, I mean, yeah, the government can... They, they even say something about, like, well, I'll give the tax payers back their money or something. It's like, <laughs> okay, is this a bureaucratic movie? But yeah, he, he kills the, he kills the boss. In like, With a karate chop to the neck. Yeah, no, karate, he, just, he just punches he him in some, the chest. He had some really well, bad... Well, we should say, we should say he's, like, grabbing he's like his patting chest. his chest, like, oh, He man, had some I, indigestion. Yeah, he, he had like, a big hoagie for lunch. Yeah, he did, <laughs> and it was too big, and he had a little bit of... A heartburn, and they didn't have Tum, so he just karate chopped him in the neck <laughs> to put out his put him out of his misery. Out of his misery. Um, it's better this way. Got those extra banana peppers, and it just yeah. really did him in. I know, but it moves us to the final, uh, I'd say, sequence of the movie. We go to the funeral. That's where we start getting our classic John Woo Dove yeah. bullshit. Yeah, and it's a it, it's a nice. Well, the, it's okay, a, it, it's, it's like poetry. It rhymes because we started out with the gospel choir, and now we're back in a church at a funeral. <laughs> yeah. But so the mo- it's like it's it's John Woo like shoving in his John Woo tropes where they don't belong because they're in a 
church, but the doves are just like in, in the church. The church. In it. They're not like they're, in they're the not church. like in a cage to be released. They were they were so just like, they were so around and even outside. I almost started to get the feeling that doves just kind of live there and people just put well, up with them. Cuz no, like sure. you wouldn't, like you wouldn't br- outside. You wouldn't bring doves to a funeral. That's like a wedding right. a wedding thing at best. Right. You're not like, "Oh, we're going to have these doves and we'll release them when we put the guy into the ground." And yeah, like, isn't this like beautiful? Just, and I also love that the <laughs> funeral was for this guy that was in two scenes that nobody gave a shit about. You would think if we were going to have a funeral as like a set piece, it would be like for a character that mattered. Well, it, it was to set up the p. It was set to set up the actual scene. But he was the he was a cop. Well, he was. Right? No, well, he you would also think if he was the, a cop that almost everybody at the funeral would also be cops. But for some reason, <laughs> the actual showdown doesn't happen until everyone has left. I guess. Yeah. You would think people would just be pulling pieces out of their fucking funeral suits and just gunning people down, but no. And uh, and like graves are exploding in the background. <laughs> yeah, like, like John, <laughs> doves flying. Well, we, we do get some towels exploding earlier in the movie, but. Yeah, Sean, oh, yeah. Sean Archer, for some reason, tells a, a little girl to take Cast Troy a picture of his son. Yeah. And he's just like, someone in the back wanted me to give you this. And he just like looks at it and crumples it up, which I was like, oh, that's no. fucked up. That's like his memento of his son. And then it just. It just hard cuts to the place being the empty. empty. And then they have like a six way Mexican standoff. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's classic. Like, like before that's that, classic. though, the thing that's so weird to me someone in the back is waiting for you, and he's at the front. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, Castro Troy is John Travolta sitting in the front. Supposedly, uh, Sean Archer is Nick Cage is in the back. Yeah. It smash, basically smash cuts to Sean it's Archer over. is Nick Cage kind of leaning over the casket which should be going into the ground i don't know how funerals work but i don't know why it's still up there they would well no one's there so why would it be still be there yeah Uh, yeah and and then and then john travolta as cast troy enters from the back and so i was like what what the fuck is happening right now but then they didn't uh, they didn't plan that out very well and they're just (laughs) like they don't know how funerals work either and they just (laughs) like yeah. There are doves there. There are doves. There are doves because like John, John Travolta is like trying really hard to have to step on any of them. It's like, <laughs> what? Well, they're just like wandering around in the set. Like <laughs> they just don't give a fuck. Like they just threw John. A, we paid. We paid of, for those, and they're highly trained. <laughs> don't step on the doves. <laughs> like he's, just the way he's walking, it's not even cool. It looks like he's trying to because they have a close up on his feet, and he's just like, uh, 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 yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, Neil's right. We get we get this weird six way Mexican standoff. People keep showing up almost in like a comical fashion. Well, it does like the close up <laughs> eye, like yeah. them giving intense eyes, like close up on their eyes. But it like it goes around like. But the four more people showing up. No, I've got my gun on you. Yeah, like, like the two lo- guns. The la- in every like the direction. last henchman that shows up. That was like legit a comic comedic beat. And if it had gone any further, I w- it would have been like full on comedy at that point. Oh, this I wish there like, was like three more people. <laughs> this whole movie is like a degree away from being a parody. Like yeah. it's. It's it hits every single '90s action beat. If it came out today, it, it would, would be. be a parody. Yeah. yeah, but that's part of what makes it so joyful is everyone's playing it so straight. Because this is the kind of movie you could see. This is the kind of movie where if they tried to do it tongue in cheek, it wouldn't be as funny as if they did it seriously. Probably, yeah. yeah. It's just like I get the feeling that like no, Nick Cage isn't aware of anything. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, like maybe Travolta was kind of aware, but like, who wouldn't jump on a chance to just pretend to be Nick Cage for half a movie? Yeah, uh, yeah, why not? Uh, I mean, well, especially peak Nick Cage. Like this yeah. is this is peak Nick Cage. He's just going crazy, and Travolta just gets to touch people and do. <laughs> well, his he keeps favorite touching thing. their faces. That's well, also, that's like a weird. Character. Sean Archer's thing is he Sean does, Archer, um, to, yeah. Because that's the thing is like I, I was recalling as I was watching this movie. I think they did cover this for how did this get made once. Okay. Um, I say once, like they cover movies multiple times, but I think they covered this in an episode. And yeah. they call that move the face waterfall. And okay. so every time it kept happening, I was like, oh, there's the face waterfall. And I was like, God, they do it a lot in this movie. That'd be a bad drinking game. You need to get drunk really quickly every time the character Archer touches a face. Yeah, I feel just, like that's something that like a blind person would do. Like, yeah, like feel their face. Uh, yeah, like, it's just see who so it is. weird. Yeah, he, he does it to the point, and the, the, the final scene in the movie is hilarious because there's like three different face waterfalls that happen in that scene where he like face waterfalls somebody and then his daughter face waterfalls their new Michael 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> She's I like, know. Welcome to the family. <laughs> the I new mean, Michael. That's like it's like a it's like a, a Caesar like Planet of the Apes thing, like a ritual <laughs> that that family does. Yeah. Like, they, like putting the hands on the thing. Well, because he he does it to the wife at one point, and that's supposed to we're, we as the audience are supposed to be like, oh, he did the move. She's gonna recognize him because that's like his little face waterfall thing that he does. It. But he does it to everyone. It's just so weird. Yeah, he does it to <laughs> what's her name? Gina uh, Gershon. Gina Gershon. Like he does it to her. <laughs> It's like you're you're just a touchy guy. This is this is a bad touch. <laughs> bad touch. He like he likes that. And that's like it's move. Um, yeah. But it's a bizarre. Like if someone <laughs> did that to you in like real life, like hey, I, my name's Neil. I'm and I extend my hand to shake, and they just like fucking reach out and touch my face. Like, like I said, unless they were blind, they'd be like okay. Well, even then, it would be weird. Like I don't. I'm pretty sure blind uh, people just don't touch your face. Un. But you would get it. But they uh, sure. I they, guess they bring they bring the daughter into the scene. Uh, one of the bad guys had her, which it's kind of silly because I'm trying to remember the flow of the scene because it cuts to the daughter being driven by one of the henchmen. And that same henchman ends up entering the room for the Mexican standoff. <laughs> and I'm so he like to, left. Yeah, he would have had to have left to go get her. And then and then he like comes in and like presumably because like does she just like run in from somewhere? Yeah. Like, I was anyone think, guarding her? I don't, no, she runs in like mom or something like that. <laughs> like, like, the, the, the henchman just go, OK, I was kidnapping you, but you wait in the car. And I'm gonna go. Like, what was the, that? That like, makes. Hey, <laughs> I'm supposed to take you here. Can you get out and just go enter the fray? <laughs> just just, just gun come fight? in a convenient time. Here's a gun. You're gonna point it at somebody. It doesn't matter who. That's just the thing that we're doing. Yeah, so take the gun, point it at somebody's head. We get your classic when when people are have body switched or whatever. Your classic. Shoot him! No, shoot him! Yeah, and shoot, yeah. she, she she wings Sean I'm Archer good guy. in in Nicholas Cage's body, and then John Tra- John Travolta, who's cast to Troy. I keep saying that, and it's probably gonna get really irritating after a while. But he, he immediately, instead of taking advantage of the daughter, he just immediately is like grabs her and goes, "Ha ha! I've got her hostage now," which immediately makes her be like, "Okay, oh, this is well, fucked yeah. up." And then we get something that I think will haunt that poor girl for the rest of her life. Uh, John Travolta licking the side of her face. In a very sexual way. Uh, uh, well, I mean, I don't know if you can lick This someone. is her dad's face, by yeah. the way. Yeah. yeah He's licking her with her dad's face. Dad's voice and everything. being yeah. uh, Grabbing her and groping <laughs> yeah. her. You would never look at your dad in, in, in so, <laughs> the same ever again. Yeah, I have a, I have a note in here I was going to touch on later where I was just... Because at the end, they get together and they're supposed to be this happy family that's reunited or whatever. And I'm just trying to imagine. Imagine being that daughter. Yeah. Imagine having like a boyfriend in the future. You're serious with them and you're you're thinking maybe this is the one. And one night you have to sit him down and be like, So when I was like sixteen, my dad swapped faces with another guy. With like a serial murderer. Um and just having to tell that entire story and having to explain how you have this weird fetish. For daddy <laughs> stuff now. Oh no! This, well, this no, because evil megalomaniac with my dad's face licked my face once, and it kind of made me hot. So well, and, and <laughs> well, because she, I just have to well, yeah, because I know, but the, but the couple she, of scenes that were like where they have like the good interaction between is Aster, when it is when is Caster Troy, and it's not yeah. really him. But and there she, is like a weird like I don't say this is like full-on sexual, but it was like they had good vibes. It's there a little like, bit because Caster Troy's obviously looking at her sexually. Yes. Presumably she's they not. They smoke a cigarette together and then he a teaches, couple of times. And then, he, and then he teaches her how to stab someone. Yeah. If and it, she, she stabs and twists it. Yeah. 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 Which is funny because he like makes the point of being Which, like, and they won't be able to fix that, but she does it to him and he just runs away. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it literally doesn't come into the rest of the scene that that's like an issue. Because um, there's this big giant boat chase scene, which is good. I mean, yeah, it's, it's good. It's fun. I mean, Jesus Christ, when when uh, the boat that Sean Archer's on goes through a police boat and you, oh, just, see, yeah. you just see it happen oh, like yeah. in a wide, it's just the boat just going through the other boat. And I was just like, Jesus Christ, this is insane. Fireworks go off because oh, the, yeah. the police boat was carrying fireworks. <laughs> Of course, the best scene in cinematic. History. Yeah, Joe, one of Joe's favorite tropes of things just exploding when they crash into <laughs> stuff happens a lot in this movie. Or just turn over if they if the car turns upside down, it's going to explode. Because I mean, that plane explodes when it crashes into the hangar, like big time. Not my, even very fast, or like it's just it just kind of stops at this. Because this is the era of hangar. This is like this is you know this is your pre-internet. This is pre people calling that stuff out. 
Right. Which, is, which is extra funny because there's a scene in the Terminator where a truck blows up after crashing, but they have a specific shot. Uh, it's Terminator 2. I yeah. should correct myself. But the truck crashes and it shows gas leaking and then it shows a wire sparking. Yeah. And it hits the right. gas and that's what blows up. And so I'm like, even in 91, they were <laughs> like, okay, let's at least have this blow up for a reason. But this movie was like, no, no. no. Well, <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 just it's blows hard to up. compare it to Terminator because Terminator is like one of the, in my personal opinion, one of the best like effects movies of maybe of all time. Like it's like the best modern pre heavy CGI special effects. This, this, I mean, there's no special. I take that back. When they take off, they laser the faces. There's some CGI there. But yeah, a little bit. Most of it's practical effects. But it looks like deep and grody enough that I was like, okay. They do a good job of like playing around with the face stuff too. They don't quite fully show the faces off. Yes. But there's even some good stuff when uh, Nick Cage is up and about, but he doesn't have his face. And they kind of tease. I hate him. when that happens. <laughs> you just wake Sometimes up. Sometimes you just face. wake up and your face is gone. <laughs> yeah. It's and take you look some at your, your enemy's face is just yep. sitting in a. In a Bucket. I, I hate it. And After you just take time. a bunch of painkillers. Because I love how he's all chill. And they have that line, hope you don't mind. I took a bunch of your painkillers. Your trippy painkiller. Your- That's another thing. Is like I don't actually practice my Nick Cage very much. But I'm surprised I haven't tried to do more Nick Cage. Because whenever there's a Nick Cage movie, you just want to do the Nick Cage voice. More. He's a national treasure. <laughs> he, well, he was in National Treasure. That's- oh, my God, Neil. Yeah. He's a literal national treasure. Yeah, he sure is. <laughs> But oh, have, God, not the beast. They have an epic boat chase. John Travolta as Castatory tries to cut his own face off. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And then, like a piece of obsidian that was just laying. <laughs> like, yeah. But it all wraps up, and they, they adopt not Michael, uh, soon to be named <laughs> Michael. Hey, yeah. go, go check out your room. Michael, too. We're going to change your first and last name. Go check out your room. The daughter does a face waterfall on him. Everybody's... Happily ever after, and since this is a '90s movie, there's no weird that kid. There's will, no weird after credits scene where we find out that Nick Cage is like still alive. For some well, oh god, that w- yeah, that would have been <laughs> that. That would have been like if this movie was remade, he'd still be alive somehow. Oh yeah, yeah. without a face. <laughs> and then the next one, he has to go. He gets a new face, and then they have to figure out like who he is. Oh yeah. okay, oh, yep. It's just like a. Dark man situation. Yep. Um, or he just has no face. He's like the no, yeah, the villain, yeah. no face. Uh, they would just do triple face off where they just add in like another guy and they've all three <laughs> swap faces. Mm-hmm. So you got like Travolta, Cage, and I don't know, like who's another their age appropriate. Just Gina Gershon. He just took just Gina, Gina Gershon. Gershon face. Just, uh, oh, I've got tits now. <laughs> oh God. That, 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 would, that is definitely a plot of a Nick Cage movie where he becomes a woman. Oh man. I watched that. Yeah, it was called The Hot Chick with Rob, Rob Schneider. Schneider. Rob Schneider. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the uh, movie. Um, do you guys have any final thoughts on the movie that you wanted to express before we get to our ratings? It was as crazy as I hoped. Some parts more crazy than I had hoped. But also had some legit moments. So like, okay, sure. I'm like on board with that. That's okay, you know. Yeah. Like it's not awful. <laughs> it's it is. Emblemat- I was expecting it to be worse than it was. I guess. Yeah, it's emblematic of like any late '90s, early aughts, or even maybe like throughout the '90s. Like, just it was an action movie that was good. It had a couple of good action pieces. It's very similar to like a Die Hard, Con Air, The Rock. I would say it's probably lesser than those, but like it is a. It had a boat going into a boat, so ten out of ten. An explosion <laughs> and. <laughs> People punching and fighting and death and not- that's a meme right now. What boats going into boats? Uh, yeah, a yacht in your yacht. Haven't you heard that? No, it's about I- like the the rich elites. They have yachts in their oh, yachts. Oh, okay, I, sure. That's a, they had that in '97. A boat in a boat. I don't think there's that- any yacht action in this. It was, was a boat in a boat, James. There was a- no hot yacht on yacht action. I like those BBW yachts, okay? <laughs> uh, um, it, was, it was the police yacht that it was actually like a weird police yacht. Anyways, yeah, it's, it, it to me it was just like a, a it was like a generic action movie with an interesting premise that I think was kind of squandered. It I, was okay. I never go as far as to call this movie generic. My thing with this movie is that every time I thought it was gonna rise above, it didn't quite do it. Sure. So I think that'll segue us nicely into our ratings, and I'll I'll go first. I told these guys they're. Welcome to give this movie whatever score they want to. But as any poor bastard who's listened to this show before, I'm so sorry. 
I go off sort of a classic rating system, which means I'm a little harsher on movies. So for this movie, I've had a tough time trying to come up with with what I want to say. It's got some really great set pieces. I think John Woo is a good director. I love Nicolas Cage a lot. I, I, Nicolas Cage, he... There's nobody like him, that's for there's sure. There's nobody like him. He's this interesting figure in that I know he's become sort of a meme. He's just so watchable and so iconic and so good. He can literally be in anything, and I'd be curious about it. <laughs> I'd be like, why is Nick Cage in this movie? What's going on in this movie that Nick Cage would agree to be in it? You know? And I think I've covered a couple Nick Cage movies on... I, I've at least covered Adaptation on this show. And, you know, that's the thing is, at one point during this thing, you said, hey, Nick Cage shows he can act. And I was like, we all know Nick Cage can act when he tries or when he's got a good director because Adaptation is a fucking master class. I don't know if you guys have seen that movie. I own it, but I've never seen it. Oh, so. my God. Uh, <laughs> it's a great movie. Adaptation, I gave an 8 out of 10. but <laughs> It's a great movie. Eight out of ten. On this oh, show, yeah. yeah. I'm just getting a feel for your rating yeah, system. I gave I gave The Godfather an eight point five. I gave Adaptation an eight. It's, an eight point five for The Godfather, that's blasphemy, Jake. You consider yourself a cinephile? No. That's, <laughs> the, whole, <laughs> that's the whole point of the show. Oh yeah. Um, face off I'm hovering around a six and a six point five. The action pieces are really good, but just uh, they really dropped the ball on the character stuff, so I'm just going to go with a 6. Just flat 6 out of 10 for me. That's that's what I'm going to give it. I liked it a lot. It was enjoyable to watch, but there's not a lot of substance going on in this movie. And not even stuff that I can like reasonably make excuses for and dig at, so 6 is what I'm going with. Uh, uh, so, yeah, uh, my rating scale is all over the place. Uh, on... I mean, if you want to know what my scores are, they're all on our website. Well, it's, it is a website that exists. It's not actively updated, oopsallmovies.com. But I, I would say I'm kind of a somewhat harsher critics. I would say it's five. Like, five is like the is, is, is middle of a ten-point scale. It's fine. It's it's okay. To me, I would say the most memorable part is John Travolta and Nick Cage are in it. That's really the, to be honest, like, that's the, that's the um, <laughs> to use a Oops on Movies term, a box getter is... Mm-hmm. Uh, is Nicolas Cage and John Travolta are on it in it. Um, but other than that, it's, it is what it is. It's fine. It's, it's just fine. So it's five out of 10. I'm going to read right from the box. Okay. Ooh, I, I'm going to read right from the box. The DVD itself it says the Travolta Cage star power comes on strong. I would say that's, that is, that's a real, that's, that's, pretty, that's a real pull quote. Right well, there. that's like 99% of the draw. Yeah, to this film. What did you say? Yeah, I mean, maybe some some woo. I think people, yeah, sure, I think people sure, were sure. still into yeah. woo. And here's a quote from somebody else who reviewed the film: "This isn't just a thrill ride; it's a rocket." <laughs> sure, that's for the whole quote that they have in here. And there's an ellipsis at the end, so the rockets explode. So it's a rocket, but it explodes. They they, they cut it off before it got <laughs> negative. <laughs> yeah, they probably they probably did. <laughs> It goes it goes real high, but then eventually. I'd be worse. I'd be curious how this movie was critically received at its time. Well, that's fr- that's uh, because I think I think nowadays people look back on it fondly. Like this is the kind of movie that people our age, who had dads that would sit them down and watch movies, remember. Oh, this is like the most dad movie. Uh, of like all. like there's kids our age that remember that grew, time grew, that Nick Cage and John Travolta <laughs> took faces, <laughs> swapped their faces. Yeah. That's cool. I mean, this is a big, big time dad movie. Like it. Well, for our generation, for millennials. So, like, yeah. 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 Uh, this has a 92 on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, but I have to oh, imagine yeah. that's a retroactive 92. Yes, it is. That, that's like a, if you looked up the thing, it's got a good score. But at the time, people shit sure. all over it. But the only people that care to review this movie anymore probably love it. Yeah. That said, we're still on Joe's. Score. I'll, give, I'll give it a six. A six? Yeah. I mean, like, it was fun to watch i mean like <laughs> it is i mean uh, now if it was like i said if it was made in 2018 you, the perspective is totally different but like hey for- it, it, it's like it, it would be a parody but yeah it's an old movie and like i, I will say I, for an action movie of this time there's no outwardly sexist plots there's no outwardly racist plots 
which is something that happens a lot in these movies. They don't stand the test of time. You can still watch this. They they dip a little bit in with like those girls with Nick Cage. It's kind of like, oh yeah, I thought that was your favorite. But like other than Mm. that, no, no gratuitous nudity. I mean, there's no racism in so far that there's like a couple black characters who get murdered by gasoline. Uh, like later, it's true. But, yeah, and it's, it's, a, true. it's a pretty. But I mean, I, I think a lot of that probably comes down to the fact that John Woo was the director, and well, that's not the guy. It's your your problematic white male directors from the '90s. That's not who well, was helming this picture. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> well, I, I think like the problems with the with it being dated are not any social economical. They're, yeah, yeah, they're not like oh geez, uh, can yeah, you believe I mean, when they said that? This it's movie just, also doesn't take place in the real world. <laughs> Right, that's yeah. true too. <laughs> Some, the only sort of like political commentary they have is like, "Hey, they're bombing a church or something like that." It's weird because it said it was like a convention center, so I don't know. The, if, yeah, it was the LA convention, so they're gonna. So there was like those. That, I feel like that the church, choir. That, that church choir was just there. That's not like really a church. Well, they were singing high, hallelujah. They were just kind of hanging out in the lobby. Maybe it was a convention. It was for a, a, it was church, a church choir, choir convention. It was yeah. a competition. <laughs> Like it's, Sister Act? Yeah, exactly. That's sister exactly what it, it takes. Was. It takes place in six yep. Act. It's the sis- nailed it. Sister verse. Um, so last but not least on this show, I like to do recommendations. If we can, we like to recommend a movie that maybe not a lot of people have seen that you think maybe some people should check out because it's the inverse of the idea of this podcast, you see. I'm very clever like that. I'm like, oh, you see all this movie everyone has already seen. How about a movie not a lot of people have seen? So for me... Mine's pretty easy. I just scoured my brain for Nick Cage movies I like, and I landed on Drive Angry. I like oh, jeez. I like that movie a lot. It's schlocky B-movie bullshit, but it does it in the best way possible. You got Nick Cage. and Well, that's that's purposeful, right? Oh, yeah. It knows what it is. It, it's very in that crank vein where oh. it's hmm. like, yeah, it's silly. I mean, Nick Cage says to somebody's face at one point he's like i'm gonna drink out of your skull and like he oh. does later spoiler oh good spoilers for drive angry but and then the guy that's hunting him down the guy that plays death i can't think of his name but he's so great uh, god there's a scene where he like pins a guy to the wall with the broken baseball bat it's so glorious huh. amber heard quits her job and walks out to uh uh, peaches fuck the pain away <laughs> so good i love that movie so much it's just the best b movie schlock in the best way i mean the plot of the movie i guess because the whole point is if you haven't seen it you should check it out nicholas cage is in hell um so he's a ghost writer um basically he's basically a ghost writer and he he breaks out of hell to uh go save his uh granddaughter who's about to be sacrificed by a cult Oh, that sounds awesome. Okay. That sounds, that sounds like a Nick Cage movie. It's fucking right? great. I, lo- I love that movie a lot. I own it on DVD, and I've watched it several times. There you go. I love it. How about you, Neil? Uh, so for me, it has nothing to do with his genre or Nicolas Cage That's okay. or anything. It does have a very distinctive actor in it, uh, Michael Shannon. Uh, I who, knew this is what you were going to yeah, say. Yeah, it's, it's like my favorite. It's my, art, my artiste film, uh, Take Shelter. Um, Michael Shannon starring film where uh, he plays a father who has visions um, of like this up this coming storm. He builds a, a uh, shelter that he takes part in. I guess that makes sense. But uh, <laughs> in, in the, the movie is just kind of like a psychological thriller. Is he crazy? Is he not? He's trying to do it to protect his family. He knows he seems crazy. Um, and it's just Michael Shannon at his most Michael Shannon. So I guess if we're going to tie it back to this movie, we're talking like, you know, peak Michael, peak Nicolas Cage. Uh, I'd say take shelter like peak Michael Shannon, like giving this really intense acting. Yeah. The thing with Michael Shannon, if you want to put Michael Shannon against Nicolas Cage, which I think is a fair comparison. This movie, Michael Shannon's quietly intense. Yes. Whereas Nick Cage is ridiculously Nick, Nicholas Cage. He's he said before his brand of acting is to be able to go from like whispering to shouting within the span of a sentence. Michael Shannon quietly simmers. This, by the way, Neil recommended this movie to me a long time ago. I watched it. It's fantastic. You should definitely check it out. Also, Jessica Chastain is his wife. Yes, and she's great. I think he has like a Unless, brother. Well, uh, except the the one exception to that for Michael Shannon would be General Zod, where he's sure. Crazy, but, but the the take shelter just uses him so effectively, where he just quietly simmers the whole movie, and then he does have an explosive yelling well, scene, and then hopefully it doesn't spoil it. But he when he finally pops off, 
like I remember like almost jumping when it happened. I was just like, cause it was like, you're waiting for it the whole movie and then it happens and it's just so like in fucking tense. Yeah. Uh, and it's just great. Like I think it's Texas. Yeah. It, somewhere it, like that. Tornado Alley. Just, I, I love a good movie that captures the feel of the Midwest. Yeah. Yeah. Midwest, Southern Midwest. It, it's not, I, I think Texas is where it takes place in, but yeah, it's good. It's kind of like a small town thing. Um, it's one of my favorite movies of all time. Um, I think at this point, people already regard that director pretty well as insofar as the movies he's made, because it's like that and like Midnight Special and uh, uh, Mud. Yeah, I want to say Mud, he's the Mud director. Um, he he did something yeah. else recently. I'm, I don't know. I, but yeah, yeah, he's he. I enjoy his movies. Um, it's Jeff Nichols. Yes. Whose brother does music for his movies. There you go. There you go. Um, yeah. Take Shelter. That's my recommendation. Came out in 2011. Good movie. Check it out. How about you, Joe? Well, I kind of hinted at this at the beginning. I've, I've been into documentaries lately, so I'm just going to recommend a documentary. Yeah. Is that allowed? No. Oh. They're not real movies, Joe. <laughs> I got nothing. No. Um, Joe recommended documentary. A lot of people, people need to check more documentaries out, especially the ones that, that float to the top. They tend to be amazing. And I'll, I'll, I'll say this because for two, for two reasons, because we the three of us watched it together. And uh, it's really weird, like this movie. So Tickled, the documentary, oh, yes. yeah. <laughs> it starts out as something and ends as something completely different, which yeah. is, I don't, I don't want to ruin If I like talk about it, it'll kind of ruin it. It's the, a movie that you can't it. talk about. You just about. have to watch it. Yeah. The, the, premise, the premise is that it's about professional tickling. Yep. It's about professional tickling. That yes. guy, a journalist is just basically doing a story on that. Yeah. And that's, yeah. that's as far in it. And you, you shouldn't yeah. even bother watching the trailer cause it's more fun to just go along for the ride. Cause the trailer in order to try to sell the movie goes a little bit into what's going on. And it's, it's worth it to just sit down and watch the movie. It's absolutely worth watching. Um, and I, I don't think any of us had any idea of what it was before we watched it. Well, you, at you least knew you, you, what you don't it know was. the you don't know the depths that right, it goes to. I didn't see the trailer or anything like somebody it just something somebody weird. just recommended to it to me, and I looked it up and watched. It, and I was like, "What, what was that?" <laughs> it's yeah. great though. If you like documentaries, I would say check that out. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's a good recommendation. Well, thanks for joining me, guys. <sighs> A long time ago, my outro to this show was to, I I said something like, I'll catch you on the flip-flop later. So that's like been my running outro, but sometimes I forget that it's my outro and I abandon it. That's okay. But this time, I remembered it, so let's do it. (laughs) Thanks for joining me this time, guys, here on Clear Tinted Classics, and I'll catch you on the flip-flop later. That's right, still keeping it. Bye.